All right, we are in the dome right now, and today is a cold and windy day. We're out of sand, so we can't do stucco on the outside. So what we're gonna concentrate on is the front door. Now we um, did get a door from Originate Natural Building. They donated a door to this build, so thank you. But um, we are gonna have to make some modifications because it's a little too tall, and we took the forms out. Let's go take a look. Are you happy with the form? Yeah. Well, with the poured. Yep. What do you even call that? Um, a like a formed ferro cement arch, I reckon. Yeah, looks really good. Great. Yeah, I like it a lot. Trim up the edges a bit, and it's got a bit of final to go on the outside, but yeah, it's going to be really nice. Ta-da! Imperial measurements. <laughs> so we're going to work on the door frame because we've taken the door form out. So the frame or a door jam, it could be called, uh, and that's the bit that actually holds the door. So this is a self-supporting arch. There's no load going on the top of the door or the sides of the door anymore. So it can be a reasonably thin material. The whole time in this dome, we've been juggling and weighing up between the size of the door and the size of the dome. So we've deliberately made it as small as possible. And we're gonna continue with that theme. And we're also contemplating whether we can make it outwards opening, which would be the most weatherproof. So we've just taken our external measurements, which Although we built a form and we could have taken the measurements off the form, always measure the bags because the bags will push in and things will change a bit. So you always want to double check your, your actual opening size versus your form size. All right, we've nailed down our measurements for the frame that's going to be in this doorway. So we're going to go ahead and cut the wood, screw it all together, get it in place, and then figure out the door jams and all that, and then cut our door down. So this is an exciting morning. Cleats are really important. They're called Velcro pads at Cal Earth, but Velcro pads or cleats, they're a specific piece of plywood and then a chunk of two by four screwed into it and then placed and nailed in between the bags. So they've got nails po pointing up and nails pointing down. And we have four on each side. This one was incorrectly placed, so it's too far in, but we got three at least, and we've got two screws that we pre-drilled, because if you don't pre-drill, you risk screwing in, and then your two by four snapping and splitting right in the middle. So that's not what you want, because as soon as it'll split, you won't be able to use it. So you kind of have one shot to get it right, and it's so sturdy. I can't move it at all, so. It's really good, worked really well. But yeah, cleats are really important. You need them around windows and doors, especially doors, uh, because there's so much weight on the door. And I guess just placement, especially in a dome, it's harder to figure out exactly where to put it. How would you know, would you go according to where the buttress is? Um, we plant the first one and the form used to be here, the pallet form used to be here. We go on the outside, we draw two lines, which show us, because very soon that'll disappear. Um, that's one way to do it, so you've got some, some goal posts to aim for, to plant the other ones, or you can still get in the side here with a tape measure and measure off the end of your form, your pallet form, if it's square and if it's a nice clean edge. You can measure that distance and then as you get up, measure that same distance again and place it again. Next step. Put the threshold in down there and then put the um, jam, I guess the pine jam 
and then rebate the hinges and put the door on. Trim the door and then put the door on. All right, we did rip the one bys and I'm gonna go ahead and sand them down and get the stain that we're gonna use on them so that they can be drying. We'll cut the door down later after Jonathan comes back with the threshold piece. We're just rocking and rolling today. Let's pretend I didn't say that, okay? Okay. change of plans I'm not gonna stain them I'm gonna wait so that I can glue them up onto our frame when we do the door we'll stain it later okay we just broke for lunch and now we're back um, Jonathan still isn't back so we are gonna start on our little secret uh, side dome we're doing <laughs> a little section on the dome for a wood stove that's our secret. So we're gonna go build that and we have some little tiny bags that we're gonna be using. So come check it out. One thing we didn't get recorded was this little concrete pad. Hayden built the form out of scrap masonite, poured it, and now it's dried and ready to work on. <laughs> you ready for the <laughs> tiny bag? Yeah. It's all cleaned up and ready to go? Yep, I vacuumed it and everything. Okay, so we're just going to stuff it with what? What are we are we doing the A B mix? Yep, stabilized AB mix, got two mixes. Okay. I'm gonna go in it, put in this little bit of wood so that we got a clean, clean edge to run the bags to. Okay. So they don't spill over. Okay. And I think we'll fix some stuff. Put a few screws in and maybe a little bit of barbed wire to hold it to the dome. Okay, sounds good. Yoo-hoo! One thing Hayden did here with this pour is he installed these nails so our bags can, uh, you know, not just slide off the concrete. So, time to lay some tiny bags. Uh, sausage roll. These little, these are eight inch bags from Vaughn instead of our usual 16 inch. And we had the hardest time when we first got them trying to figure out how to fill them, but a flexible bucket, bend that, and it's just like a little funnel, it goes straight in. It's like a worm. This is so bizarre. Wild world of earth bagging. Doing Hayden's vortex. Vortex. I know. All right, we need some. This is the first time Hyper Adobe has been married with vortexing. Uh, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> At least on this one. Yeah. Yeah. I need more mitts. This is adorable.
Okay, I think we're all in agreement. This is adorable. <laughs> we need to do more of it. Remember when we wrote off the eight inch bags uh -huh. on the solar shed? We were gonna do the, the garden beds mm -hmm. and we tried to fill them. We we're like, nope, this is dumb. I'm really glad we came back to them. They've been sitting in our storage unit for like two years. Mm -hmm. And look, look how adorable this is. It's the perfect size for this little fireplace. It's gonna be great. I like it a lot. All right, friends, it has been a very productive day. We got the door frame in, we got our little beehive dome built. And as you can see, we have a pretty epic sunset behind us. So that means we're just gonna have to come back tomorrow, try to get this door hung and get anything else we can finished before Hayden's gotta leave. We'll see you in the morning. Good morning. Good morning. What are we doing? Today we're putting in a door, but we're also doing all of our measurements in mesh. <laughs> uh. So our door is 748 metrics. <laughs> <laughs> metric <laughs> By units. By 1,905 metric units. Which, which metric which unit? doesn't mean a single thing to me. <laughs> Is it but. millimeters, centimeters? <laughs> millimeters, yeah. All right, yeah. well, let's go make a door. Wait, what's what's this number? This one's for the extra Bottom. piece that'll catch the threshold. So it's 840 millimeters. It's like all of our batteries are dead in the garage. <laughs> so you, you plug them into the charger. Well, I thought maybe you would do that.
So are we getting new hinges? Uh, if they'll work, let's use them. When we take them off, we can give them a sand clean. That's it? That doesn't seem right. So what's the plan? I'm not sure. <laughs> nah. Perfectly. Like we measured the door at the start mm -hmm. and then we were like, ah, oh, these are about an inch and a half. That's fine. We'll figure it out later. And it's filled out to one millimeter less. So we have half a millimeter either side exactly on the width of the door, which is mental. I mean, that's how I planned it. So I don't. It's true. I shouldn't be so surprised working with you, Ashley. <laughs> I should learn to expect it. <laughs> but now we just need to trim the door, to the door height. So the height of the current door is 1905 millimeters, and we've got to come down to 1874. Mm. Yeah. So that gives us three millimeters at the top and three millimeters at the bottom. Measured a whole bunch of times, and now it's time to cut the door. Wish us luck. Look at where you're standing. Oh, my bad. <laughs> that was exactly correct, though. That was an amazing cut. First cut success, time for cut number two. It's time to put the door in. I got a little ahead myself, so we actually have to rip down one of the sides because it's not straight. So, one more cut and then we put the door in. Got to hit record on that cut, but now we're doing a dry fit and see if it'll fit. Just watch, watch these edges. Let me go on the inside. Come on. So cool. That's really good. It's sitting flush with the bottom there, and we've got still about that six yeah. mil or something so we can come up a bit on the bottom that's looking really good oh mate look at us so I'll get some shims that's looking pretty good pretty happy with that Yahoo! all right we're coming out towards me we did it actually Playing around with the door, the joys of reclaimed doors and not completely square frames, but we've made it work pretty well. And now we just need to put the door jam on it that the door closes up against. So we're gonna have a little bit of a weather strip in there as well. So we're just gonna measure them out, cut them and put them up when the door's closed. <laughs> 